بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض الملك القدوس العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه السلام عليكم والسلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين الحمد لله بيد فضل فالله سبحانه وتعالى وجل وعلا We are trying to benefit from the wisdom of Allah جل مجده from the knowledge of Allah سبحانه وتعالى from the speech of Allah Jalla Majduhu, from the advice of Allah Jalla Majduhu, whose knowledge encompasses everything in the heaven and earth and beyond, and knows everything, whatever her past, whatever will happen, and his knowledge is complete, and he is all-knowing, all-powerful, all-wise. So what a blessing to have I have the privilege to listen or to know about the advice of from such a being, such a being, such uh, a knowledge and such a wisdom in which everything is included. So we mentioned that Surah Tul Jumah begins with saying. <coughs> يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ الْمَلِكِ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ That whatever is in the heavens and earth, it glorifies and is doing the tasbih of Allah Jalla Majduhu. And we mentioned that the, we can learn many things from the word tasbih, although it is one three letter word with seen baha sabbah but it has immense guidance and wisdom uh, in it so whatever is in the heaven and earth living or non living is glorifying allah jalla is doing the tasbih of allah but really there is no translation for the uh, tasbih. So first of all, we covered some of the points. Today we will cover the next uh, four points which we, we mentioned yesterday. Uh, but just to summarize, tasbih is of two kinds. <coughs> one is internal and one is external, physical and spiritual. That everything in, in the heavens and the earth, including angels, the sun, the moon, the stars, the things which we can see, the things we can not see, except the rebellious human beings and jinnat, even Jibreel and Mikail, alayhim, and all other angels, uh, they in their own way. Physical tasbih is the physical obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the sun is orbiting in its own orbit and the moon is in its own. The honeybee is making honey and whatever they do. And spiritual tasbih is their internal connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which they have the marifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in one of the sahih ahadith that there is nothing between the heaven and earth which does not know that who Allah is and who I am. So even these things and this creation, they know that the Prophet والسلام, is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even these things they know that the Prophet والسلام, is the Prophet, is the messenger of Allah and Allah is the Lord. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our God. All these these things they know these things. And they know the Prophet alayhi salatu is the Prophet is the Messenger of Allah. So one is that. 
so this means that following the system of allah following the deities uh, set by allah jalla majduhu they uh, that is a tasbih and many of them are willingly you know, nearly all of them although they are got no option but to follow but they with uh, with love and or when willingly or not willingly they have to do that and they are doing and many are doing willingly so this is uh, was the uh, the summary now the next three or four points one is that uh, the word tasbih uh, also means to swim swim in the water so if anything is actually um, sailing or in the was swimming that also uh, is indicated by the word tasbih so what does it mean for us then okay the creation is doing the worship and uh, tasbih of allah swimming now indicates and uh, swimming refers to that if you do not put effort if you do not make the movements of hands and feet and then a person can drown that thing can drown so this means for us that if we won't be obedient to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what will happen that we will drown in the sea of disobedience if we internally do not do the tasbih and remember allah jalla majduhu what will happen is that we will drown in the sea of ghafla heedlessness and uh, forgetfulness bismillah alhamdulillah ghafla and heedlessness so like for example drinking water so doing tasbih firstly is meaning the the drink it in the way physically let's say for holding with the right hand and reciting bismillah this is like the zahiri tasbih and uh, saying alhamdulillah then and internally being thankful to allah jalla majduhu in the presence of allah thinking it is a blessing that will be internal tasbih so everywhere in every form wherever a person is they can do tasbih but they have to actually like in the swimming is it move, movements of hands to stay actually above the water and it indicates that actually that a person who is swimming they are uh, making certain movements and effort and that's making them actually go further and there is also uh, something opposite which we can say water that a person is actually uh, going against that force so meaning that there will be uh, forces against uh, the human being like forces of evil force of shaitan so a person have to make their way through those obstacles that is also it is then a person will be able to do the tasbih the second uh, another meaning of swimming uh, the the word tasbih in the quran is mentioned in surah an-naziyat wasabihati sabha it is mentioned about those horses and those horses when they put effort and they are running and they are going forward and uh, with, with speed with power that also is known uh, actually wasabihati sabha or has that, that meaning as well so so for us what does it mean so tasbih also means that we should eagerly willingly uh, with we should be motivated with love and with willingness 
were making the effort to go forward. So what does that mean? That in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should be proactive in the dhikr of Allah Jalla Majduhu. We should be proactive. Proactive meaning actually be alert. So Tasbih has this meaning and we see the creation they are eagerly actually doing whatever they are supposed to do. You see what, what animal or in birds or in the creation we don't see any uh, slackness, we don't see any laziness actually uh, to the command. So this is uh, Tasbih. So uh, probably it is from Sayyidina uh, Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala no, to, to, to stay active and motivated and ready actually uh, just to follow and just to um, obey uh, the commands of Lord and be in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in an inclination. So this is also one of the meaning of tasbih so yes the heavens and earth and whatever is in between doing tasbih what does it mean for us that we should be eagerly let's say adhan is said we should be eagerly make a movement active being proactive prayer time comes not to be lazy the command uh, to speak truth or guard our eyes comes being uh, proactive uh, but that, that that will also uh, the, the, the tasbih will include that uh, as well so being proactive eager uh, with the vigor and with resolve and ready actually to follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that is how the angels are. The difference is the angel willingly or only they have to, we have to do it with our own conscience uh, and uh, willingness. So eagerly do effort. So this is also uh, one of the meaning. Also the boat when it actually sails, third one is when the boat sails on the sea or on the water, that's also uh, indicated by the word tasbih for us it will indicate that tasbih uh, obedience internal external obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa jalla wa ala is like to is the boat like a person who sits in the boat they are safe from drowning they are safe from uh, many many other amphibians or um, any snakes and other um, creatures in the sea and they can go toward their destination uh, so a person which means when a person is in dhikr he is in the like fort of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a person who is in obedience he is like obedience and verbal and physical obedience the person <coughs> is as though sitting in the boat is sitting in the safety so like this the safety boat a person is safe from what from the wrath of allah from the punishment of allah from the losses uh, which a person suffers um, due to uh, negligence and or due to being in the sea or other so a person who is in the boat is safe so a person in doing tasbih, in dhikr of Allah, he will be safe. Like for example, the person who recites the prophetic as cards of morning and evening, who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, calls Allah, they are as though they have, at that time, they've jumped in the boat. So when a person feels that they are in danger uh, in any way or anyhow, they call upon Allah, they remember Allah, if they are bored or if they whatever, they will find, you see many people are depressed, many people are frustrated, many people are going through problems, many people, a person goes through illness. But at the moment you remember Allah, 
obey Allah, uh, establish connection with Allah, this will be as though <coughs> you have sat in a boat. Boat of safety, boat of serenity, boat of peace, uh, and, uh, and a boat of actually a person feeling satisfied, a satisfaction and thing. So that is uh, the third also the word indicates towards there this is the benefit and the other is which the quran mentioned uh, uh, about stars moons and sun, uh, and sun it means that every one of them is uh, rotating in their orbit so that's also in the word of tasbih it indicates uh, orbiting orbiting what that means is orbiting that that the the earth is revolving around the sun it's, it's in your own orbit the uh, the moon is orbiting around the uh, the earth so tasbih means so that like they are attached to a central point the sun is the center for the solar system and then for sun the galaxy is actually there the sun uh, is in the galaxy and to the universe uh, how the galaxy is uh, so there is everyone everything has a center towards which actually they are uh, uh, orbiting especially we are talking here about the sun and the moon so tasbih would mean that to be in orbit orbiting around what the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's say like you see people doing tawaf. The Kaaba is in the center and people are doing tawaf. So they are attached to it. They are attached to the Kaaba. They are trying to come closer and closer. So there is a center. So that is a tasbih. And you see all the universe also orbiting like this. So when we, for what, <coughs> for us, what it means is that when we also stay in line with the Sharia Muhammadiya, in the line of the Prophet Islam, or sirat mustaqim is also an orbit. It is actually the, a line which we should not actually cross. We should not. So what happens if the earth loses its orbit and the, its gravity is pulled towards the sun? what is going to happen what will happen is that it will be lost in the universe it will be lost in the space it will be destroyed in the space because it's lost now it has nowhere to go and no proper way to uh, protection so similarly if we are orbiting around the command of allah about us or a command of rasulullah we are safe and we should be in line if we pull ourselves away from it at any time or anywhere we will also be lost in misguidance in kufr and in shirk and in bid'ah in actually many many other sins and sh shaitanic world and destruction destructive world we will also actually be uh, like this and also uh, it's mentioned that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sabbihu bukratan wa asila that in morning and evening uh, a person should engage the, the, the make this a mission <coughs> of your life that you stay in orbit as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the uh, beloved prophet Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam that he said uh, la ilaha illa anta subhanak so he did the tasbih of Allah there whilst he was in the, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, relieved him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala freed him uh, from the fish where because of the tasbih internally uh, we are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala physically he was there in the belly of the fish so tasbih is which actually gives one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said then after وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ that he attributed perfection to Allah and he said, Oh Allah, I am uh, and humbleness and he adopted tawadu. Uh, so subhanallah, 
uh, Allah is pure, Allah is perfect, that benefits the person more when a person thinks I am imperfect, I have imperfection, I am impure, Allah is pure, I am impure, and because of that, then a person also starts to become pure. Allah is perfect, I am imperfect, and a person's imperfections also begin to improve uh, better than actually before. So a person should actually not be competing with others because that becomes negative, uh, be it a competition, be uh, of dunya or in deen. Sometimes then jealousy and other things come across. So the best thing which a person can do is that you should try to be better than yourself, than what yourself was yesterday. So a better personality than your, uh, what you were yesterday or a better version of yourself what you were yesterday. So you're competing against yourself. This always benefits. Sometimes competing against others. Sometimes if they have a positive mindset, they also benefit. But if they don't, then that ends up in negativity and jealousy and uh, other things. So, uh, so this is. So these are uh, some of the uh, meaning that Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentioned that it means that Allah Azza wa Jal is free from all imperfections and what the creation, what they attribute, some attributed the angels are daughters of Allah, the Isa alayhi salam is the son of Allah, or actually um, they attributed many things, shirk, uh, that there are other uh, creation which shares Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sifat for his zat. These are Allah is free from everything, all this imperfection. He is samad. He does not need anything and everything in it. Once we become uh, also uh, in obedient and we also do the tasbih uh, as we are supposed to do, then we also become blessed in this dunya and forever and ever. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, enable me and yourself to inshallah be one of the musabbihin, one of the people of tasbih and inshallah this will benefit us especially uh, the month of ramadan is coming and i uh, made announcement before as well that there is a special workshop for f freedom from addictions that means <coughs> if you're addicted to anything drugs cigarettes or you know wrong things or any other alcohol uh, or pornography there is you need help person cannot fight this war alone so there is a workshop coming from the 18th uh, free from addiction also a ramadan seminar on 18th and uh, also on 19th to prepare you uh, for uh, the ramadan and uh, other things as well actually that one, one way the golden touch academy is doing a workshop that how when you are sitting here, people have lost their jobs, some are not working, and etc. How can you earn uh, money while sitting home with a little investment? So that academy, Golden Touch Academy, will be doing a workshop with Brother uh, Tanim and uh, Tosif and Usman and others. And also, so there are all different kinds of activities. Uh, look at the, inshallah, Facebook page and you will find them while sitting in, in your home. You can, inshallah, participate in these retreats and workshops and uh, for knowledge and wisdom. Jazakumullah. If there is any question, please you may uh, ask. There's a question from Facebook. Please ask the Honorable Shaykh later if someone makes a dua to Allah saying, by the wasila of the Ismail Azam, by the greatness of Ismail Azam with the name. This may as known by the awliya Allah, please, gra please grant me this or that. Will this dua be harmful? And second question, I heard the name, uh, the name Yahyu Yaqiyum is the ism is the ism azam. Is this true? Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, yes, if a person asks by the names of Allah Jalla Majduhu, this is also in the Quran. 
as the Quran says, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى For Allah, they are beautiful names. فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا And call Allah, do dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through them. So that is perfectly fine. You are doing through Ismail Azam or any other names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught certain duas in which he mentioned that, Oh Allah, I ask by the names which you only know or which are in your knowledge which any of the prophets knew, etc., etc. So this way is fine, alhamdulillah. And you heard, Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum, uh, is Ismi Azam. You see, Ismi Azam, firstly, you should know that uh, Ism is one name, not two names. So what those people who say these two names, what that means is that the meanings of Ismi Azam, are, uh, some of the meanings of Ismul Azam are present uh, in the in this name so that is uh, another name beside the 99 name uh, is Azam. but uh, Mashai have said the, that uh, one person was asked that um, uh, probably it was a Sayyidina Imam Muhammad Baqir uh, or Imam Jafar al-Sadiq that teach me Ismail Azam and he said I will teach you, come with me. So he went and with the, the Imam and they boarded a, a boat and as the boat or the sh ship went to the deep waters, the, the Imam asked this person to be thrown into the water. He was thrown into the water, so he was swimming but could not get and then he called the imam oh imam please help me uh, with me or oh, others please help me but they were not responding when he lost hope in everything uh, then he started to actually uh, ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa jalla wala and the current or the water brought him towards the shore or to the boat and he was saved so he said to Imam Muhammad Jafar As-Sadiq Ta'ala that I thought, I thought you were going to teach me this great name and I was almost drowned. What was? He said, well, when you were in the sea, when you had hopes in other things, the reliance upon other things, you were not being helped. And when everything leaves and you have that type of belief and that type of yearning and that type of uh, humility that only Allah can help you then whichever name you will call Allah you will get the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so to another person um, it was asked another great uh, wali that which is isme azam azam means big great like was Allah Akbar you say azam azam he said you tell me which is isme asghar which is small name of Allah Small name, there is no small name. So every name is Miyazam provided cleanse your heart from the love of dunya and love of sin and love of evil and cleanse or empty your stomach uh, from the morsel, unlawful morsel, haram risk and the love of other than Allah with whichever name you will actually call that will be as though ismi azam for you meaning actually ismi azam by people mean that that our dua is accepted so people should learn and uh, many of the mashayikh have said that if any vird given to a murid by the sheikh is the ismi azam for him meaning that will work as that actually but the real name uh, is not from amongst these 99 names and but its meaning nearby there are many many uh, other names it has uh, its meaning so yeah, yeah. Exactly. a question uh, from our sister from Morocco while trying to establish a connection with Allah Azza wa Jal the past mistakes and maybe sins are still chasing us that make us feel helpless and especially when we notice that we are we are frustrated from many good things we dream to be and realize that some see that this is a punishment from Allah Azza wa Jal so how to get rid of these feelings and in what way we are not punished? 
when a person does tawbah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the proper way that he is regretful, remorseful, leaves, abandons the sin, fulfills the rights if they are violated and not <coughs> have intention not to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then by the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person is forgiven and many a times their sin is changed into virtue uh, as well. So if a person have thoughts of the past sins and they haunt, that can be good, that can create humbleness and humility, that can actually, because now a person have done, done Tawbah and they are doing good deeds, so now the possibility is the Shaitan might come from another direction, from another side to actually disturb the person through self-likeness and through self-likeness and also uh, arrogance and all the, these things. So for that type of things, as if you are remembering the past sin, although it has been forgiven, uh, then you've done tawbah, that can create actually humility. It can balance, it can remind you of what uh, you can do and how you have violated. So that regret, if is channelized towards positivity it can actually you may say make you do more good things uh, and it can uh, generate humility humbleness it's like our uh, blessed great grandfather Sayyidina Adam Islam, who didn't sin but due to the glory of Allah he still feels that he has fallen short so even on the day of judgment he will remember when people will go for Shafa to for him to him first time to say the Adam al Islam on the day of judgment okay, that you are our father etc etc please do he say that I ate the forbidden fruit so I feel shy to go in front of so this is tawado this is humbleness and that is good uh, because through humbleness a person gets closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so inshallah if you have done properly Tawba and it comes then use that you, those thoughts to become humble and to remember how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is merciful to you, how Allah Jalla Maiduhu is compassionate to you <coughs> and inshallah you will benefit always even from uh, those thoughts. The question from uh, YouTube from Zain. Will Christian priests get punished for misleading the Christians? See, everyone who misleads anyone, be it Muslim or Christian, if you, if you, um, or any person who misleads a person, be it even a dunya, a business, or in politics or religion, they will be uh, punished by the justice of Allah, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, forgives someone, and if, unless they repent. Uh, it's a very serious matter in religion, knowingly. Uh, misleading uh, people. So the question from YouTube, uh, Salam, uh, what is the reality of uh, bad ru, uh, bad spirits? Some people uh, say people who are killed or die in, in, in accidents, their souls are not taken by angels, uh, angel of death, and they wonder and, co and can possess people too. There is nothing like a bad ru or the good ru in Islam. Every ru and every human being when they're born, even the ruh and the body of the human being is uh, born on fitra. So some people even are born illegitimate. For example, out of wedlock and out of marriage. Still, there is no fault for, uh, of the, uh, the child in there. So the child has full potential to become uh, a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa jalla wa ala. So there is no bad uh, rule as such or are good only once they come on this face of the earth and with their intention they then they become good good and bad refers to the nafs nafse ummara and nafse mutmainna so that can be so people who die in accidents and things rather thinking they are unlucky they are classed as shaheed as a martyr so from akhira point of view that is a good death uh, in, in, in a way, Shahada is good death.
So one should not look down upon people who die, but rather actually they are uh, they receive the reward of martyrdom uh, because of uh, their accident. If a wall falls on you or a car accident or um, illness actually a person overtakes a person, heart attack, these things actually uh, earn the reward uh, of martyrdom uh, through people. Like now, people are dying from this virus, fighting uh, with and this the doctors and nurses and others so they have reward uh, in there so so that way of thinking is not correct way rather the opposite is true there's a question from adam salon on facebook salam sheikh you, you just mentioned about total reliance on allah in the story uh, in the story how can one reach that level of strong reliance Reliance comes with actually practice. Reliance is the, you may say, uh, act of heart. It has not to do with physically. You think physically a person should do whatever Allah commanded us physically. Like the Prophet Islam said, like the companion who came said he wanted to come in the mosque. He said, shall I leave my camel and rely upon Allah? Prophet Islam said, no, tie it. Tie the camel actually with the rope and uh, with it and then rely upon Allah's meaning that once you you do physically whatever you're supposed to do as the commanded but still you should not rely upon the rope your reliance upon Allah because many other calamities other things can happen meaning even with uh, so now in these uh, terms also like Prophet Sallallahu mentioned in the hadith that if a person has uh, such disease which are um, contagious he al have mentioned that you should stay uh, two spears uh, two spears or one spear length away from that person so like now they're saying to keep some physical distance from each other so Rasulullah said one spear away so this guideline which the whole the world is active on uh, quarantine and uh, isolation and keeping away social this was firstly given by the Prophet والسلام, not the other uh, doctors or others when Rasulullah gave this instruction and uh, the Sahaba Ikram practiced this once they knew like Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab and also the, this guidance so, yeah. so how can one achieve that as I said that you once uh, inshallah uh, practice this Let's say a person is getting haram risk from someone. So it is necessary to abandon. So now to leave uh, that part or part of haram and then actually from the heart knowing that Allah will subhanahu wa ta'ala help and do effort. And so once a person will see the benefit, the end result, that the end result was good, then the person will have more confidence, more reliance. They will like to do. Similarly, uh, when especially a person uh, abandons what the nafs and shaitan say and takes what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then one sees the result. So how will it become stronger and stronger once you see the results? So you can start with small things and then slowly, slowly the confidence will build. Then you will inshallah even uh, have reliance in very, very difficult and challenging uh, times as well. So there's a question from uh, Facebook from Shahada Hussain. Uh, thank you for answering my question, Sheikh. Uh, sorry to ask again, but if someone asks Allah to reveal to him the name of Ismail Azam through dreams or other means, is this okay? Yes, that is fine. There is nothing wrong with asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to actually inspire you. Uh, with the uh, blessed name or actually with good dream glad tidings so that is only thing is that the because prophet islam sallallahu alaihi said because you've asked about dreams that uh, lam that nothing remains from the nabuwa uh, except illa al mubashirat that all the, the prophethood the door of prophethood has been closed uh, meaning there's nothing with mubashirat so he was asked what are Mubashirat? Mubashirat means good news, glad tidings, uh, 
Rasulullah Sallallahu said, these are good dreams. So dreams we get, dreams prophets get. So dreams are there, but the prophet's dream used to be whenever any prophet has a dream that is wahi, our dream is not wahi. So dream, people can get good dreams, they can learn things, so you can be inspired about the name of Allah Jalla Majduhu. But I have advised to you that if you do dua with the proper way, it will be acceptable anyway. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it. It necessarily, it does not have to be through Ismul Azam. Okay. There's a question from YouTube from Jackson. Asalaamu Alaikum Hazrat Sahib. What is the best cure for depression? Depression, you see, comes <coughs> when uh, things do not happen how you expect or things are not actually how you <coughs> expected uh, and a person is thinking and uh, the mind does not have a thing to release uh, and the thoughts and and, and these things uh, are roaming around are pressurized uh, in are pressed in the mind and heart because there is no release so again and again like pressure cooker the pressure builds in actually a person and then that end up in depression and things so the solution will be to release these things so how once a person have connection with Allah yes you know I am pressed I am limited I have reached that end but my Allah has no limit my Allah is all-powerful he is not powerless my Allah has not run out of options so when you have someone and a connection with someone who is all-powerful, all-knowing and can do everything, can deliver you from everything, then a person naturally it releases, actually comes out of, uh, starts coming out of depression and plus talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So <clears throat> spend time, five, ten minutes, you go in, in seclusion and remember Allah is with us, with me, watching me, hearing me, He knows everything. And then connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the dua. Ask uh, Allah Zawajal subhanahu wa ta'ala your situation uh, and uh, relief from your situation. And sometimes there is goodness because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa jalla wala can turn um, day into night, night into day, dead into living, living into death. So you yukhrijul hayya min al mayyit wa yukhrijul mayyit. You can do anything like this. So a person who have this, that my Lord, the one who I am connected to, can do anything. I am lost, but that loss can be resulting in profit. Uh, I am feeling deprived, but I can uh, be blessed. So basically, following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being connected with Allah and reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, expectation, putting your hopes in Allah azza wa jal, is actually starts freeing yourself uh, from depression, but when a person turns away, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran وَمَنْ عَرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْقًا Whoever turns away from my guidance, he will live a depressed life. There's a question from um, uh, Ahmed Ali. Sometimes uh, our Iman our Iman Gush is like water, sometimes it's too hard for some reason. Why does Iman go uh, up and down? Iman goes up and down because of two reasons. Because uh, like everything, Iman also needs nutrition. Nutrition, like motivation needs nutrition. Iman needs nutrition. Sometimes what happens is that, let's say, if I have been doing bad deeds, the result let's say I've been eating bad food, the result might appear after two days, three days in my body. What is that result? My health has gone down. My health has started affected because of what I ate. So Iman is the spiritual health. Nutrition, like the food, good food or bad food effect, simply good deeds or bad deeds uh, affect the Iman. So let's say I today feel my Iman is gushing now. That's not out of no reason. It is because of something which I did in a night or just before, yesterday or, or recently. 
amal and the result of that spiritual food has appeared now. So I should be thankful thinking what did I do differently and one can do more. If I am feeling blocked, this is not the result of now. This is the result of the past, yesterday, the day before yesterday, last week. What have I done which I didn't used to do before? I've done, I watched something, I said something, I did something and considered it. And then doing a stock far, asking forgiveness and things, uh, a person will see that they get relief. So uh, in conclusion, Iman is raised once you do good deed and be in presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is with me because uh, let me uh, give you an example from hadith. The Prophet Islam said, إن أفضل الإيمان أن تعلم أن الله معك حيث ما كنت. That the highest level, the best iman is the best level iman is when which one is best level iman? He said that when wherever you are, to be mindful that Allah is with you wherever you are. This is أفضل iman. This is the best iman. So now here you have the answer. That to stay in the presence of Allah is with me, with all his qualities, seeing me, watching. That is raising your iman. Plus good deeds, they also raise the iman. Ghafla, meaning being not in the presence of Allah, uh, in forgetfulness and bad deeds, they will decrease. But sometimes we feel effect today of, and the matter was done yesterday. And we think, oh, what I have done now, today I have just prayed. Why I'm not feeling good, I'm feeling bad. It might be because actually what I've done before that is affecting me. Now what I have prayed now might affect me after five hours, six hours, I might actually be relieved. So you don't take paracetamol and immediately next minute you say my, my headache has not gone. You wait half an hour, 20 minutes to take it effect. You eat an, uh, <coughs> food or drink an energy drink. It takes time, A vaccine takes time. Many things take time uh, to actually take effect. <coughs> There's a question in Urdu from Saeed, uh, Saeed Anjum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, sir, if we go to someone's house, when we don't know who it is, 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 اور غالب گمان میں اگر اس کوئی اپنا وہ اس کا رزق اچھا گمان کہ وہ اس کا حلال ہے وہ کھانے کھائے گا بندہ کھا لے اس پر گناہ نہیں ہے سوائے اس کے کہ آپ کو یقیناً یا غالب گمان ہو گیا کہ بھئی اس کا رزق ٹھیک نہیں ہے پھر مسئلہ آپ کو علم نہیں ہے تو آپ کو اس کا کوئی یعنی گناہ نہیں ہوتا اور اس کے نقصانات سے اللہ پاک آپ کو انشاءاللہ بچائے گا question uh, from my sister assalamu alaikum question on uh, on behalf of our sister what is the ruling of of reciting quran during menses and the best amal women can do uh, during ramadan during menses and during uh, the, this time period actually the ruling is that you can listen to the quran <coughs> if you see the two types of worship don't limit yourself listening to the quran have more rewards than even recitation. So it depends how a person listens. So the, in these period events, you cannot recite Quran. You can first thing is you can recite duas, those verses of Quran, those ayat which are like uh, you may say have supplication in it, like Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Falak, Nas, and others which are done for supplication with the intention of doing dua, you can recite. So the prophetic askar, many of you, the hadith, you can recite all of it and some of the dua, uh, the Quranic part as well, actually, even though you are in this. Secondly, make that time. Uh, once you see, let's say you used to uh, read Quran one hour, two hour. So now what you do, listen to it or read tafsir of it read commentary of it study the commentary or the tafsir the meanings of the quran 
listen to the Quran, reflect upon the Quran, listen to lectures about Quran. So those days a person can use like this and they can actually recite the prophetic azkar. <laughs> uh, and in uh, Ramadan, uh, a person can do immensely, uh, very, very, uh, you may say, different things. We give certain amals. Uh, the, inshallah, the poster will be put there and it's on the Facebook already. I think if you uh, just actually go down, that there will be seminar on Ramadan on 18 and 19. They, in, in that, you will be mentioned what amal to do, what else you can do. You can do so many things, even though you, you are in these days. Uh, still 99% of the things you can spiritually benefit because all other Dhru, Sharif, Kalima, Dhikr, Tasbih, mm -hmm. uh, Ayatul Karima uh, and other things, everything a person can actually uh, re even recite. And uh, there are sp specific amals as others uh, to do as well, uh, inshallah. They are written as well as well as verbally, hopefully they will be mentioned. Uh, if you go on our website, zavia.org, and also here uh, participate, mention to others this uh, Ramadan preparation seminar, and inshallah you'll find much more information. Assalamu alaikum. Question from, uh, from, from my sister on Facebook. How can we overcome the habit of forgetfulness, especially in Salah, no matter how hard we try? You don't need to worry about that. You need to learn ruling about that. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Rufi an ummati, Allah has forgiven my ummah things done out of forgetfulness. So don't worry out about forgetfulness. Just actually worry what should you do. So if a person forgets what number of prayers they learn the masla that, that they can take the minimum number of prayers uh that uh, for example if they are confused about is the two or three take two but if they actually sometimes they have inclination uh, it is third fourth so actually they can take the uh, minimum and there are other maslas related to it but so learn the masla uh, or the um, the solution that what to do once you forget uh, the in, in the prayer but a person is not sinful if the person misses forgets uh, a wajib, they do sajda sahab, if they miss, uh, forget the rakat, if they do it very rarely, then actually they should consider uh, that, uh, that, that that has happened and take that as actually uh, minimum. If the mind is inclined towards one and mostly a person forgets, then you act upon what your mind says. If it is even, then take the minimum. So, so there are different uh, solutions for it, inshallah. So one should not uh, worry about that, rather change that worry into attaining and learning this little uh, masla. There's a question on Facebook from Shahadat Hussein. Can, can sins cause a person to fall into depression and is this a form of punishment from Allah? Some say the persistence in a particular sin can be the means to losing one's iman, how can one protect against this happening? I already quoted a verse of Quran. Uh, Whoever will turn away from our remembrance and guidance and obedience, which means he will live a depressed life. So yes, definitely that can cause dep uh, depression and persistence upon a sin uh, is also <coughs> actually uh, more sinful uh, uh, persistence so the solution is to break the cycle no matter it is comes for short while but many people think okay if I repent again I will do be doing that again that does not matter you break the cycle no matter it happens tomorrow but do the tawbah properly eh, inshallah if you break the cycle and do tawbah each time Inshallah, you are Iman, or you will not die without Iman. But if a person is persistent, still we do not say they'll die without Iman, but there's danger that sometime it ends uh, like that. There's a question from uh, YouTube from Mustafa, uh, Mustafa Sharifi. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. What's the real meaning of this ayah? Fear Allah and Allah will teach you. Uh, the meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the real meaning. No, we can only mention what comes in the books and tafasir. It means that a person, uh, it means the person who adopts taqwa, he becomes purified and wa yu'allimukumullah. <coughs> And then Allah gives you knowledge and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases you in wisdom and, and knowledge. So a person who is purified, who goes through the process of purification, he will, his heart will be enlightened, his actually <coughs> uh, uh, chest and uh, breast and actually will expand with light uh, and, uh, and, and knowledge and wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There will be open in Sharah is Sadr and also so this is the Barakah of your Allah wants to bless us but our darkness of our sins is blocking when that darkness goes away the blessings and the light from Allah then I fear knowledge and many a time then a person through uh, Kashf and through other uh, unveilings get much uh, more detailed knowledge uh, about actually uh, the commands of Allah, the wisdom of Allah, the marifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a question from YouTube from Madana Sadiq Madin Gildi. Asmani Bijli Girti hai. Koi reason hai? Haan, yeh koi shari masla to yani nahi hai. To siya rang par bijli girti hai asmani. جلدی یہ تو مجھے اس کے بارے میں کوئی خاص کوئی یعنی علم نہیں ہاں یہ بات ہے کہ آسمانی بجلی جو چیز اگر کوئی میدان ہے تو کوئی ادھر گھر ہوگا کوئی شے ہوگی درخت ہوگا تو اس پہ زیادہ چانس ہے کوئی اس کو یعنی ٹارگٹ کہتے ہیں برحال یہ سائنسی اور تجرباتی چیز ہے اللہ جل مجدہو ہی بہتر جانتا ہے یا پھر جو یعنی زائز دانوں کا یا اس فیلڈ کے جو علم رکھتے ہیں ان کا جو تجربہ ہو اس میں question from some asif in an area where muslims seek organizers have arranged for food that has been prepared by the seek community but is distributed to the vulnerable can it be consumed by muslim people you see food prepared for by anyone provided it's not meat uh, and it's clean, pure, a person can eat and consume by Muslim community. If it is the food prepared by non-Muslim, but the meat was halal and nothing uh, haram, doubtful has been put in, then that can be consumed as well by Muslim community. Hmm. Question from uh, from Facebook. Uh, Hadraji, if a person has strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but still lacks in night ibadah, how can one uh, come out of this? So what is it still lacks in? Uh, still uh, lacks in, uh, lacks in, uh, in, uh, lacks in night ibadah, night ibadah. Mm -hmm. uh, read the question again fully. Uh, if a person has strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but still lacks in night ibadah, mm -hmm. how can one come out of this? Uh, you see, when any uh, person is doing their ibadah is nafal, if they do not do, they are not sinful for it. But obviously, it is barakah and blessing. So a person can start, if they can easily um, get up for tahajjad, uh, they, they can get up for before fajr and pray. Or if not, then the other way is uh, to do some extra nawafil or ibadah after isha. The other way is to do is just before sleeping let's say you sleep late and you just before sleeping one o'clock twelve o'clock do wudu and do so start with the easy one and then finally work your way up to the uh, highest level of the hajjah and uh, so there can be baby steps and this uh, and oh, for example doing things like this the proper Islam mentioned you know, the certain duas certain askar if you do it's like you have uh, worship 24 hours like the azkar of Hazrat Abu Umama Bahli radiallahu anhu like uh, he said that the Prophet Islam said if you do these azkar then it's as though you are doing dhikr 24 hours uh, more uh, subhanallahi adada ma khalaq subhanallahi mil'a ma khalaq 
سبحان الله عدد ما في السماوات وما في الأرض سبحان الله ملء ما في السماوات وما في الأرض سبحان الله عدد ما أفسى كتابه سبحان الله ملء ما أفسى كتابه سبحان الله عدد كل شيء سبحان الله ملء كل شيء so this same similarly with alhamdulillah Allah akbar لا إله إلا الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله so this is is it, is it? and that's how actually uh, if a person can do that's you know so you did a small or prophetic as cars you do before sleeping so you can do the powerful but small amount of dhikr small amount of worship and before sleeping and it says though another which i will mention the prophet islam said whoever offers isha prayer with jama wherever they are uh, they will get reward of half of the night worshiping and whoever offers fajr prayer with jama as well they get the second half so whole prayer so there are other amal which can compensate uh, if a person cannot uh, fully uh, spend time it's a question from uh, Amana Sadiq Madani from Pakistan Yom al-Hisab se pehle qabr ka azab kiyo Yom al-Hisab se pehle qabr ka azab kiyo hota hai wo is liye hota hai ke Allah Jalla Majduhu Raheem aur Kareem hasti hai aur pehle to dunia mein sawal ho jabe dunia mein azab kiyo hota hai dunia mein wo is liye ke bandu ke guna hote hai aur pehle to wo तकलीव से ही अल्लाह पाक बाद गुनाहों को माफ कर देता है बीमारी से माफ कर देता है और परेशानियों से माफ कर देता है बीमारी आ गई उसे माफ हो गया इन चीजों से भूख से और तरह तरह की और चीजों से इसी तरह जो गुनाह बाकी रह जाए वो फिर मौत के वक्त जो फिर भी बाकी रह जाए वो कब्र में जो कब्र में भी सजा पूरी ना हो फिर हशर में तो ये अल्लाह की रहमत का हिस्सा है दूसरा ये है कि जब बंदे की मौत आती है तो वो उस वक्त उसका हिसाब किताब जो उसने अब तक किया होता है वो शुरू हो जाता है अब क्यामत वाले दिन इसलिए हिसाब किताब है क्योंकि अब तो अभी अपने अमाल का नतीजा वो भुगत रहा है लेकिन हो सकता है आप उसके लिए दुआ कर रहे हो कोई उसको सवाब बख्श रहा हो उसकी औलाद उसके लिए सवाब बख्श रही हो तो वो उसका अमाल नामे में जाएगा तो फिर वो क्यामत वाले दिन फाइनल हिसाब होगा या बंदा कोई गुनाह का काम ऐसा कर गया है कोई ऐसे चीज बना गया है कोई ऐसा पेज बना गया है कोई ऐसा YouTube वीडियो बना गया है कोई या बाहर सही कोई ऐसा गलत काम शुरू कर गया है कि उसकी औलाद और दूसरे लोग भी उसके बाद वो काम वो करते जा रहे हैं तो वो उसके बाद अमाल नामे में वो जमा होते रहेंगे तो फाइनल तो फिर वो क्यामत वाले दिन होगा और और अब के मुताबिक जो है सजा जजा वो शुरू हो जाएगी उसकी ابھی کے مطابق اور دوسری وجہ یہ کہ کئی لوگوں کے حقوق مارے ہیں بندے نے کئیوں کے لیے ہیں کئیوں کو دینا ہے وہ تو ابھی مرے نہیں وہ تو ابھی علیدہ علیدہ اپنی اپنی دنیا میں ہے تو یعنی وہ سب پھر کٹھے ہو جائیں گے ادھر پھر جو ہے سب کو انصاف ملے گا تو یہ وجہ ہے اصل میں تو قبر سے سزا نہیں شروع ہوتی یہ دنیا سے ہی ہو جاتی ہے شروع عباد دوال یوزوی طور پر لیکن وہ قبر والی بھی اسی کی سمجھ لیں کنٹینیوٹی اسی کا تسلسل ہے اور حشر والی بھی پھر حشر میں بھی اگر معاف نہ ہوئے تو پھر پل سرات اور پل سرات پر بھی نہ ہوئے تب جا کے بنا دو زخم ہے تو یہ فلٹر لگے ہوئے ہیں یہ اللہ پاک کی رحمت ہے اللہ پاک کا کرم ہے اسلام علیکم دیل کرتا ہے ہم دنیا سے دنیا سے گناہوں سے بچ بچ کر چلے جائیں ہم لکھم سکسیسفل ان دا آخرہ یہ فکر لگی رہتی ہے یہ بہت اچھی فکر ہے تو اس کا طریقہ یہ ہے کہ پہلے تو خود بچے تذکیہ کرے تاکہ گناہ منی مائز ہو جائیں پھر اس کے بعد جو ہو جائیں تو استغفار کر کے بندہ سوئے تو وہ گناہوں سے پاک ہی گویا سوئے گا استغفر اللہ اللہ دی لا الہ الا اللہ الحی القیوم عطوب علی تو تین دفعہ پڑے گا تو وہ گویا ایسا ہے جیسے نبی علیہ السلام کو پیدا ہوا ہے سمندر کی جا کے برابر بھی گناہ ہوئے تو معاف اسی طرح جو ہے نمازیں وہ معاف تو انشاءاللہ یہ دونوں کام کریں اور بروسہ اللہ کی رحمت پر رکھیں ہماری نہ نیکی ہمیں نفع دے سکتی اللہ کی اذن کو ہے نہ گناہ نقصان دے سکتا ہے تو اللہ جلو مجدو پر بروسہ رکھیں اسی کی رحمت اور فضل پر کرم پر اور اپنے 
جو ہے حیثیت کے مطابق بندہ کوشش کرتا رہے اللہ پاک مجھے بھی آپ کو توفیق عطا فرمائے جزاکم اللہ حسن الجزا سبحانک اللہ و بحمدک نشہد و اللہ الہ الا انتا نستغفرک و نتوبی علیہ